the world woke up to a single headline that sent shockwaves through every industry. Maxwell Chikambutso announces public release of self-powered device. Within hours, the internet broke. Newsrooms scrambled. Stock markets trembled. And in cities across the globe, people whisper the same words. It's finally real. For years, Maxwell's self-powered invention had been the subject of speculation, mystery, and disbelief. Rumors claim it could produce infinite power without fuel, charging, or sunlight. A small box that could power homes, vehicles, even entire cities. Governments called it impossible. Corporations called it dangerous. But now, it was available for purchase. The announcement, the reveal took place in a massive open-air dome in Harare, Zimbabwe. Thousands of journalists, engineers, and scientists gathered under a structure glowing with soft, blue resonance light. At the center of the stage stood a glass pedestal. On it, a sleek, compact device no larger than a shoebox, pulsing gently with golden energy. The crowd fell silent as Maxwell Chikambutso stepped forward, wearing a simple black suit, no logos, no sponsors, no entourage, just a quiet confidence. He placed his hand on the device and smiled. For decades, energy has been controlled, sold, restricted, but energy is life, and life should never be owned. He turned the device slightly, revealing a glowing symbol etched into the casing. R1, Resonance 1. This, he continued, is humanity's first self-sustaining energy unit. It never runs out. It never needs to charge. It powers itself forever. Gasps echoed to the audience. Demonstration of the impossible. Maxwell raised his hand. The lights dimmed. Behind him, a transparent wall revealed an empty space, a small home built entirely for this moment. He connected a single cable from the R1 unit into the wall. Instantly, the house came alive. Lights flickered on. Fans began to spin. Screens glowed. The refrigerator hummed. All powered by a device smaller than a backpack. The crowd erupted. Cameras flashed. Scientists rushed forward, whispering in disbelief. What's the input source? There's no fuel port, no panel, no rotor. Is this even physically possible? But Maxwell just smiled. It doesn't need an input. It is the source. The system crashes online. Within minutes, the official website, our one global dot tech, went live. And within 10 minutes, it crashed. Hundreds of thousands tried to place pre-orders. From Tokyo to New York, from Lagos to London, the demand was instant, overwhelming, unstoppable. Social media exploded. Influencers reviewed the teaser clips. Analysts compared it to the invention of electricity itself. And engineers posted reaction videos saying, If this is real, it's the end of the global energy market as we know it. Meanwhile, oil and energy corporations scrambled to respond. Stock values plummeted. Emergency board meetings were called, and somewhere inside a private jet above the Atlantic, a CEO muttered, If he actually sells that, it's over for all of us. Behind the scenes, the resistance begins. As the public celebrated, something darker was happening in the background. Encrypted emails were sent. High-level officials whispered in closed rooms. An anonymous cyber attacks began targeting the servers hosting Maxwell's website. The system was under siege. Maxwell's team noticed the intrusion almost immediately. Their try to shut us down before the first shipment even leaves, said one of his engineers. Maxwell didn't flinch. He simply replied, Let them try. The world has already seen it. And once the truth is seen, it can't be unseen. He turned to his chief of logistics. Begin shipment alpha. Deliver to all registered test zones before sunrise. The man hesitated. Sir, that means deploying without government clearance. Maxwell looked him dead in the eye. We don't need permission to give people power. The first deliveries, under the cover of night, sleek transport drones lifted off from hidden launch pads across Zimbabwe. Each carried a glowing crate, sealed, secure, and labeled our one energy unit. The first destinations, rural villages, small schools, and hospitals that had suffered decades of power cuts. By dawn, those places would light up for the first time, permanently, in one small village. A young girl watched in awe as engineers placed a device on a wooden table and flipped the activation switch. The lights blinked on. 
the fan spun, and for the first time in her life, she could study under a lamp that would never go dark. It's beautiful, she whispered. The engineer smiled softly. It's just a beginning. Elon Musk reacts. Thousands of miles away, inside Tesla headquarters, Elon Musk watched the viral footage with narrowed eyes. He leaned back in his chair as the clip replayed, the glowing device, the house powering up, the cheering crowd. So he finally did it, he murmured. His aide asked quietly, Do you think it's real? Elon paused, studying the device. If it's fake, it'll fade. But if it's real, it's the start of a new civilization. He opened a private communication terminal and typed a message directly to Maxwell. The screen read, Congratulations. Let's talk. The hidden agenda. While the world celebrated and Tesla reached out, deep within a hidden energy syndicate, a red alert was issued. A meeting was held in a windowless underground room, its walls covered with glowing charts of collapsing energy markets. He's destabilizing the system, one executive said coldly. Billions in oil, gas, and infrastructure gone overnight. Another voice replied, Then we must act fast. If he releases a device globally, control over energy and the economy ends. The leader leaned forward, his face half-lit by a holographic projection of the R1 device. Find his factories, find his distributors, and end this before the sun rises. The countdown begins. Back in Harare, Maxwell's headquarters buzzed with activity. Crates were being loaded, orders confirmed, and drones fueled for a second deployment wave. But on the monitors, a red blinking alert appeared. Sir, we're being tracked. Maxwell stared at the screen, a digital map showing multiple unidentified aircraft approaching the shipment routes. He whispered quietly, They're not here to stop the sale. They're here to stop the future. He turned to his team. Prepare the fallback plan. Protect the devices at all costs. The hum of the R1 cores intensified, glowing brighter as if the devices themselves could sense the storm coming. Outside, lightning split the sky over the self-powered city. And for the first time since the announcement, Maxwell looked genuinely worried. The night of the storm. The rain hammered the glass roof of Maxwell's innovation dome as the storm intensified. Outside, drones zipped through the night sky, their cargo lights flashing like fireflies. But above them, dark, unmarked aircraft cut through the clouds, silent and fast. Inside the control room, alarms blared. Unidentified vehicles detected on intercept trajectory. One engineer shouted. Maxwell stepped closer to the screen, his reflection glowing against the red holographic map. How many? Six jets. No ID. No transponder. They're heading straight for shipment route Delta. A long pause. Maxwell turned to his lead pilot. Activate Project Shield. Now! The pilot's eyes widened. Sir, that's experimental tech. It's never been field tested. Maxwell's voice dropped, calm but unyielding. Neither was the R1 when I first turned it on. Project Shield, the defense of the future. As the jets close in, a low-frequency pulse rippled through the air. Suddenly, the drones carrying the R1 devices emitted a soft blue glow, forming a connected electromagnetic web around them. Bolts of lightning from the storm arc harmlessly off the barrier, dancing like electric rivers. The first missile launched by the intruders exploded midair, neutralized before contact. Inside the control dome, applause broke out, but Maxwell didn't celebrate. He knew this was only the beginning. They'll send more, he muttered. They always do when they can't control something. His assistant looked at him nervously. Sir, the shield drains enormous energy. How long can it hold? Maxwell smiled faintly. Forever. That's the point. The media frenzy. By morning, footage of the mysterious aerial clash had leaked online. Clips showed streaks of light over the Zimbabwean sky. Drones weaving between bolts of lightning. Conspiracy channels went wild. Was Maxwell attacked? Who sent those jets? Did he just activate an anti-gravity defense field? Mainstream outlets demanded answers. Governments denied involvement. But the Internet had already chosen a side. Hashtag Protect Maxwell trended worldwide. Across Africa, crowds gathered in support, holding signs that read, 
Free energy belongs to everyone. Power to the people, not to the grid. The revolution wasn't just technological anymore. It was human, inside the syndicate. Meanwhile, far beneath the skyscrapers of Dubai, the secret energy consortium met again. The leader slammed his fist on the holographic table. We underestimated him. He's distributing units faster than we can intercept. Another executive whispered, His shield technology is beyond anything we've seen. It's like he's pulling energy out of thin air. The leader turned to the others. Then we'll take his energy source. Every system has a core. Find his and cut it off. A dark smile spread across his face. We're not just fighting an inventor. We're fighting an idea and ideas can be erased. He leaned forward and said two words that sent a chill through the room. Initiate Black Eclipse. Maxwell's hidden facility, deep in the outskirts of Harare, beyond the city lights. Maxwell entered an underground chamber known only to a few, the core vault. The room was circular, filled with humming resonance, devices connected by glowing conduit to light. At the center stood the original prototype, the first self-powered device he ever built, unlike the polished R1 units. This one looked raw, handmade, and alive, its pulse slower, deeper. Maxwell placed his hand on it. A faint voice recording played. The voice of his late mentor, Dr. Komu. If they ever come for it, remember, energy is not meant to be contained. It flows through everything, including you. Maxwell closed his eyes, whispering to himself. Then they'll have to fight the current. Elon Musk's visit. The next morning, a sleek silver aircraft touched down quietly near the facility. The door opened and out stepped Elon Musk. His arrival wasn't publicized. No cameras, no media. Just two visionaries finally meeting face to face. You've caused quite a storm, Elon said, glancing at the glowing sky domes around the self-powered city. Maxwell smirked. You of all people should appreciate a good disruption. Elon chuckled. True, but what you've done, it's not disruption. It's a reset. He walked toward one of the R1 units, studying it carefully. How stable is it? As stable as the sun, Maxwell replied. Except this one can fit in your hand. Elon nodded slowly. You realize what this means? The end of fossil fuel economies. The collapse of trillion-dollar industries. They won't go quietly. Maxwell's tone hardened. They already came for me last night. Elon's eyes narrowed. Then you'll need allies. Tesla, SpaceX, Neuralink. We've built infrastructure they can't touch. If we combine our reach with your technology... Maxwell interrupted softly. It's not about control anymore, Elon. It's about freedom. The kind they'll never allow. The two men stood in silence, the low hum of the energy cores filling the air. Elon finally said, Then maybe it's time to show them what real power looks like.